Fishing News is brought to you by Navionics, Okuma, Yozori, Evinrude, and the Star Island Yacht Club in Montauk. Hi there, Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Uh, starting off this week, coming to you alongside my brand new toy I got right here. This is the Old Town Predator PDL that I just took delivery on, delivery on this week. I can't wait to get out fishing with it. I haven't even had a chance to splash it yet as I want to get it fully rigged up. I've got plans to put a new fish, hummingbird fish finder on there, uh, cray rod holders, the whole deal. You guys at Kayak already know how it is. Like anything else, there's a bunch of toys, tricks, add-ons, and everything else that you can add to make your uh, outings even more enjoyable. So I'm gonna be working on that. Obviously shooting some video covering it as we go along. Um, once we do splash it, however, expect to see a couple of these fall videos live, these uh, forecast videos from the kayak. Should be a good time. I really look forward to the uh, how this is going to open up opportunities for me this fall like, and the likes of blackfish, false albacore. I mean, I, I love targeting stripers, but there is just something about the fall run on the blackfish on those albies that this is going to open up a whole new world for me. And it can do the same for you, obviously. Just head on over to oldtown.com, check out the full line of fishing kayaks that they have. You can check out paddle, ver uh, paddle versions, pedal versions like I picked up here, all sorts of stuff, so be sure to give it a look. All right, moving on into the reports. Going to start off with some shark news. Comes courtesy of my good friend, Captain Tom Logan of Fish on Charters and the Fish Trap. Now he had a shark charter on Sunday morning <clears throat> as there's been some good inshore sharking of late thanks to the big schools of bunker and chub mackerel that are being seen. He said the trip started off rather uneventful. They caught a, a caught and released a small thresher around 11 a.m. And he posed the question to the crew to see if they wanted to stick it out with the sharking or if they want to go inshore and load up on sea bass and fluke. After a little deliberation, the crew made the right decision. They stayed on the shark drift. Not too much longer after that, they hooked into a big thresher that they estimated between 250 and 275 pounds. That's a good reward for sticking on the fish, and they have a mess of steaks. I'm sure the crew is going to be eating really well for some time to come. Speaking of those chub mackerel, they're starting to be seen from Block Island over through Montauk, Watch Hill Reefs, and well into the middle of Long Island Sound this week. Uh, unfortunately, many main anglers are mistaking them for bonita or false albacore, even bluefish, as they feed rather similarly at times as they're blitzing on the small bait that we're, be that we're seeing right now, but they are much different species. With speedster season, excuse me, upon us now, be sure to brush up on your identification by checking out the mackerel and tuna guide that we have posted right now at thefisherman.com. It outlines all of those common inshore max and tuna that you're going to see, albies, bonita, different kinds of mackerel, and so on. So check it out because there's a big difference from one to the next as far as whether or not you want to keep them for the table, how you prepare them, and so on. And let's see, speaking of those Bonita, Andy Smith was fishing a tsunami talking popper off Watch Hill over the weekend when he hooked into a drag screamer that turned out to be an eight and a half pound Bonita. Uh, there was no mistake in the ID on this one as he waded in at Watch Hill Outfitters. I also got word of confirmed Bonita catches off South County beaches, from shore along that same stretch, and inside Long Island Sound in the waters around Niantic. I'm still waiting for that first confirmed false albacore catch in local waters this year. So if you happen to make it, be sure to shoot me an email at tlipinski at thefisherman.com and I will most certainly put that in my upcoming video, maybe even get you on a cover of one of the weeklies. It's always a big event once that first albi arrives and if you want to pass along where you got it, maybe I'll come out there and chase after them myself. Hey, let's see, moving along. That really good striped bass out, bite out around Block Island continues this week. And I got word from James LeDuc. He sent me an email over the weekend as he was fishing uh, around the island on Sunday along with his good buddy Matt DiMatteo. They did really well, both getting into a bunch of big striped bass around the ledge. Uh, Pretty decent action I've heard overall, daytime and nighttime. Daytime's been a mix of trolling frames as well as live eels. Nighttime, of course, live eels. And soft plastics are doing really well this year as I talked about in last month's print issue. So give that a look as well. Also of note, I've been hearing of some really, really big bluefish running with the bass at times. Some of these fish pushing, if not exceeding the 20 pound mark. So keep this in mind. If you get into any of those high double digit choppers, and they're obviously an eligible species in our Dreamboat Fishing Challenge. And of course, head on over to thefisherman.com for complete details on this tournament. 
And last up this week, <clears throat> TJ Kopecki checked in via email and he said he wasn't able to shoot a video, unfortunately, this week, but he still passed along his report for you. He said that Mount Hope Bay ground fishing remains awesome, as he put it. He landed some giant scup in the waters off Hog Island, along with some keeper black sea bass and even a handful of small fluke to go with it. And then on his way back home at the end of the day, he found birds working over bait, but he's not even able to score anything under it. Couldn't ID quite what was uh, causing all the commotion. He said he's heard of some bluefish in that area, but he hasn't gotten in any himself. Could have been blues, maybe some of those chub mackerel moving on. You just never know this time of year. And then last up, he said he spent a little time scooping blue crabs over the weekend and ended up with a pile of really big blue claws, which obviously made for an awesome meal. All right, well, there you have it. I'm Toby Lipinski for the New England edition of the Fisherman Magazine, wishing you tight lines if you head out under the water this weekend. Win the incredible Steigercraft, Evan Rude Lowrance Grand Prize Boat Package, and more in the Fisherman's 2019 Dreamboat Fishing Challenge. Get the details now at thefisherman.com.